Hello ladies and gents. This video has been reworked with new content due to a mistake in the previous version. As Paolo pointed out in the comments, Topton has set a very aggressive thermal throttling temperature for this mini PC, which I skipped past completely. While the out of box experience was exactly as presented, it's possible to push CPU performance further. So I've redone benchmarking tests and added game footage as well. For those willing to tweak the BIOS settings, there's a substantial difference, but also other consequences as a result. And that's what this new video will show. All I can say is, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, and I'll do better. Providing you with the most accurate information on the mini PC is my only goal, and the previous video was not up to standard. So here's take two. I do really like Intel's new budget line of CPUs. So when I received a suggestion to check out the Topton N9N with DDR5, I said, why not? It's a good time to see if the extra memory bandwidth makes a difference. This is one of those mini PCs that has no branding, but from the marketing material and manual, I've pieced together that it's manufactured by Topton and the model number is N9N. And at the time I bought it, the cheapest one I found was on AliExpress from the King Novi store. The N9N starts from just $156 US for the bare bones with 8GB of solder DDR5 and storage is dirt cheap. This is the first time I chose to buy the model with storage over the bare bones as it was only an extra $16 US for the 256GB SATA SSD and Windows 11 Pro. The price is right, but is the performance? Well, it's complicated, but we'll get to it in a moment. In the box is a power supply, travel adapter, monitor mount, 2.5 inch SATA expansion ribbon cable, screws, and quick start guide. The mini is made of plastic and looks nice. Build quality is fine. The port selection is impressively odd. Audio jack, triple USB 2 and one USB 3 5 gigabit on the front. There's a micro SD card reader on the side, HDMI 2 and DisplayPort on the back, along with dual gigabit LAN jacks. While I'm really happy to see DisplayPort for once, there's no USB-C and three of the four USB ports being USB 2 is not good. I could accept two since plenty use a wired mouse and keyboard like myself, but three, nah. Opening the Topton N9N is pretty easy. Four exposed screws and pop the lid with a knife or something else if you don't have a repair kit. This pre-build came with a Shiji 256GB M.2 SATA SSD and you can mount an additional 2.5 inch SATA drive on the bottom and connect it here. The CMOS battery is on this side for easy replacement if and when it dies. Thumbs up! The very old Intel AC7265 Wi-Fi module from 2014 is soldered on. If you go bare bones or don't choose Windows 11 Pro as your OS, I'm happy to report Ubuntu worked fine straight off the USB. Chrome OS Flex failed to boot. The only other N100 CPU mini PC I've reviewed so far is the Morphine M9, which had great performance but used the DDR4 stick for memory and is $195 US dollars for the bare bones, although you do get much nicer features. The B-Link Mini S12 is another older Lake N mini PC with a cutdown N95. Its performance wasn't great out of the box, but upping the power limit in the BIOS gave it a nice boost. These are important comparison points as you'll soon see. The Topton had the lowest single core CPU performance out of the box for the new Alder Lake N chips. It's almost 6% behind the Morphine M9 with the same CPU. However, with some BIOS power limit tweaks, single core matches the M9. However, out of the box multi-core performance was 22% behind. With the power limit increased, the drop in performance narrows to just over 8%. In video encoding, the Topton was neck and neck with the Intel NUC Essential Pentium CPU, which is 21% behind the M9. With power limits lifted, it's 12% behind. 3D Mark results were unaffected by the power limit increase, so they won't be shown. The extra bandwidth from DDR5 has helped the Topton a little bit in 3D Mark DX11, fitting it in second place. It's almost 5% ahead of the Morphine M9. The same didn't happen in the DX12 benchmark. 
it was consistently just over 1% behind. So CPU multi-core performance is gimped out of the box. Graphics performance is fine. So since CPU performance can go further, I decided to check out a few requested esports titles. Valorant pushes both the CPU and GPU. I didn't notice any difference between the Topton and the M9. Same dips in frame rate, but it is playable. Compared to Valorant, CSGO is much more GPU heavy. I had to lower it down to 720p resolution and low on all settings with no anti-aliasing. It plays okay, there are dips here and there. It's possible to turn down some of the settings even further to very low for a better experience. League of Legends at medium runs well. In my playthrough, the frame rate didn't dip below 80 FPS. So while all the games are playable, CSGO is the toughest to run out of the three. In emulation, there's an improvement in Gran Turismo 4, which can only be due to the extra DDR5 bandwidth. But it doesn't manage to hold 60 FPS for long, with dips below all over the place. Improvement is also seen with Mario Kart Wii. The top tone performs around 10% better, but still doesn't manage to hold 60 FPS like the Pentium. This extra performance isn't free though. Maximum CPU temp is 86 out of the box, but 102 with a power limit increase, and thermal throttling was recorded with both. This is why Topton chose to have the throttling limit kick in faster. The cooling on the N9N is much worse than the M9 and S12 minis. There's no cooling for the SSD, and I think the temperature sensor on the included drive was faulty, as it showed 40C no matter how much I tortured it. Whatever the case, an M.2 SATA drive isn't going to get too hot. Here are the benchmark results of the included Shiji SSD. It's a good performing budget SATA drive. Idle power draw is high at 11 watts. Max power draw was 31 out of the box and 35 with a higher power limit, which put it in line with the Morphine M9. Noise levels were low out of the box. With the bias tweaks, the maximum fan noise shot upwards and was clearly audible. So there's a trade-off with this mini PC. If you want better performance, you'll have to accept a much higher CPU temp and noise, which just shows how much better the cooling solution was on the Morphine M9. Costs have to be cut somewhere. I'll show you how to push performance further in the BIOS. In advanced, head to CPU configuration. For power limit 1, change it to 30 watts, and power limit 2 can be the same or higher. Next, go to OEM configuration and set the CPU frequency auto low temperature to a lower number. This is the setting I didn't change previously, and Topton has chosen to throttle the CPU quickly. A value of 10 or less provided the same result, but I did 5. You can also change the fan setting, although the result of full on and auto ended up with the same maximum temperature. Finally, don't forget to save and exit. It's worth remembering that for 176 US dollars, you do get a fully pre-built PC with an N100 CPU compared to the 195 US dollars for the Morphine M9 which needs memory, storage, and OS. There are pre-built options available there, but they can be pricey. However, do keep in mind the Morphine M9 has four USB 3 ports, a nice metal shell, better CPU performance, cooling, Gen 3 NVMe slot, Wi-Fi chip, as well as a single 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, and a couple of other differences. So while it does cost quite a bit more, it's not like you aren't getting a lot more for those extra dollars. Still, the Topton isn't a bad buy for its ultra budget price. I've provided the data to help you decide if it's what you're looking for. I know these CPUs can be configured with different TDP values, but my general expectation is 
that minis with active cooling should always target the highest CPU wattage within spec, as they're running on power from the wall and not on a battery like in a laptop. Fanless minis, on the other hand, can run lower if it's too difficult to cool them passively. Anyway, let's end with the pros and cons. You can get the Topton N9N for quite a bit less than $200 US pre-built, depending on the configuration, which is a very attractive price point. It has DisplayPort and dual gigabit LAN jacks. The mini PC is decent quality and looks nice too. However, CPU performance out of the box isn't great, and increasing the power limit pushes maximum CPU temp and noise. DDR5 is soldered on, and it lacks USB ports, or at least more USB 3. Like I said, definitely not bad, but it has its problems. Are you interested in this one? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, do check out my B-Link Mini S12 review for an N95 alternative. Thanks for watching. Cheers.